Let's take a look at this peaceful Ritter Eye, or also known as Magnificent Anemone. While it's still in this Mega Matrix Planet Aquarium's 310 gallon, and before it goes into its new home, which might be temporary, and I'll talk about it here in a bit. <laughs> So what are we doing today? As you can see from the intro, I wanted to kind of uh, show off what this Ritter Eye Anemone is looking like as of today. Now for whatever reason, it's actually, I want to call it, sh it's shrunken in, it's shriveled up because it has been to a point where it comes up to this wall and stretches itself and attaches some of its mantle or whatever you call it up to this so i would say that this is half the size at least and will stretch out to at least double that size and it looks magnificent now one of the big things though is that i've noticed that right now that it's shriveled up a bit that its tentacles are a lot longer so i kind of look like the way that it looks better this way because then the clownfish as you can see have a place to kind of hide into I just think that looks honestly awesome. If you haven't tuned in before, my name is Dennis uh, and this is Queen City Reefs. This uh, channel highlights mainly a big portion of what the Mega Matrix is and what it's become from the very beginning. I started off with an actual marine land, 300 deep dimension, and it sprung a leak and long story short, I ended up getting this one instead after uh, settling with uh, Marineland. I moved from Texas back in 2017 and now I am in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. For those that don't know, Charlotte is a city known as the Queen City and that's where Queen City Reefs comes along. So back to the story. This anemone has since I've had it, which has been a couple of years now, has grown a lot. And because of that, I think it's time to give it its new home. There was a time where I was thinking of actually selling it along with the two clowns as long as they would all go together. And honestly, because of how long I've had them and how long I've had this anemone, I just couldn't bear to do it. And so I decided that instead I am going to move it into its own home. And the reason for that is because, again, it stretches double the size to the point where it almost touches these corals, it touches the ganis. I could, you could argue that I could move all of this, right? And I've thought about it, but who doesn't want more space for more coral? So how did I, what did I decide to do? Well, let me tell you. If you've been following this channel, you would know that I've been working on setting up this 15 gallon innovative marine nouveau desktop aquarium. I believe that's what it's called. And it's been running for quite some time. It went through a cycle process. When I added, I uh, decided to cycle it with uh, ammonia and in bact in Microbacter 7 along with other bacteria. It's been cycling for a couple of months now and it's been running in there and I even used it as a uh, quarantine tank for corals. I have now since then put some cleanup crew in here that I plan on keeping in here and because I believe it's ready to have coral in here since I again have used it as a coral quarantine this has always been the intention to be the home of the Ritter Eye Anemone with the Clownfish. 
if you notice on the beginning of the video, I showed that they had actually laid eggs. And funny story was that I thought both of them were females. And it so happens that I guess they are not, unless if someone can tell me that females can turn back into males, maybe that's what it is. But the black ocellaris clownfish actually used to be paired up with another black ocellaris clownfish that was smaller and I thought was the male and it ended up dying and the black ocellaris clownfish lived by itself for quite some time in the peninsula tank. So for those that have followed me, I don't know if you remember the peninsula tank. The black storm clown, uh, when I first got them, it came with, it was with three clownfish, three black storms and they were supposed to be together. They kicked one out, it ended up dying and then the female killed the male. Uh, and then she ended up being a widow and single for a very long time. <laughs> So then came along, I decided one day, you know what, the peninsula is coming down and I decided to throw the black ocellaris on the opposite end of the tank and saw and just figured hopefully, you know, because it's a big tank, they'll work it out. And they seem to have worked it out more than what I intended, which they actually have paired up. It's funny because if you were here and I wish I would have caught it on video, there were moments where the black ocellaris clownfish would come near the black storm and the black storm would you know do this kind of like shaking its body like vibrating and i would assume that was a sign of t being territorial and i figured okay they're not going to work it out but then one day i saw them both swimming inside the anemone and i was like wow i mean if there's one thing that i love about anemones and clownfish is that symbiotic relationship that they have and therefore i thought it was just amazing that they paired up i never thought they would lay eggs because i thought they were females and I've actually seen the eggs, you saw them orange right now, but I've seen them uh, to where you see the silver eye of these little clownfish. But of course, being in a tank where there's a lot of predators, they don't make it, you know, they hatch and then I never see them again. So I'm hoping that maybe I can use this tank to raise those fry. The intention is not really to raise clownfish. But if it so happens, I am definitely going to try. And if I'm successful, then I'm definitely going to have more clownfish. I'm curious to see what they look like being that one's a black ocellaris and the other one's a, a black storm clownfish. So I'm curious to see what the babies end up looking like. Um, either way, I do plan on uh, keeping them here. And if it doesn't work out for raising babies, then at least the clowns will be happy to be here by themselves. Um, and hopefully I don't disturb any of the behaviors that they have right now, which if you notice, it's that they are mating. So we shall see. Now, of course, I'm not going to uh, bore you and bring you along on removing the anemone an and the clownfish from this tank, uh, because that's going to actually take for me to use both hands. And so you will see this now in the next clip, you will see the anemone an in the other tank. But I still have a little bit more cleaning to do with the Innovative Marine. I'm going to use the opportunity here where I'm going to drain this tank out more than half to then refill it with fresh salt water that I've mixed because that way it makes it easier to be able to catch these clownfish because I don't think that they're going to be, I don't think they're going to be too hard, but I don't think they're going to make it easy for me either. So we shall see. So stay tuned. Here in a moment, you will get to see the new home, uh, this anemone an and the clownfish in their new home. Now, if you've lasted this long for, of course, I would ask you that you please hit that like button that you also please consider subscribing and leaving a comment below. And let me know what you would like to see next. In the meantime, we'll be right back. And after so long, we finally have it set up exactly like I intended. Here is a 15 gallon Innovative Marine Nuvo, I believe it's what it's called. Pretty much it's an all-in-one 15 gallon, as mentioned in previous videos. But for those that have just tuned in, this is pretty much a cube tank. And you're able to, of course, Google the dimensions on it. I'm using a max spec jump light, which I'm not too happy with because I'm only able to get it to turn on and turn off, but I'm not able to connect to it in order to be able to control it. So I'm using the presets that it has, but in order to get it to turn off and on, I'm having to use one of those Wi-Fi plugs that I programmed to turn off at a certain time and turn back on. Now I did get the light for $50 and normally that's what you get with $50 light. So I'm not gonna complain other than let you, letting you know that I'm unhappy with it. But I'm sure that, that this is not an issue with most lights. As far as PAR goes, it does put out a lot of PAR. And so, at least in the presets, I'm sure you can get even more PAR 
uh, without the presets and being able to tune in everything to 100%. Um, so at least for this tank, it serves its purpose for sure. Now, the anemone itself, this is a magnificent anemone, a Ritteri anemone. And it initially was in this rock, which is the rock that it's been in for a very, very long time while it was inside the Mega Matrix Aquarium. But there was one night that I had turned off the return pump and there was no flow in here at all because I wanted to feed these fish. And if not, then the food goes into the overflow pretty fast. So I had to turn that off and I forgot to turn it back overnight. And I'm not sure if that's what caused it or not, but it ended up moving all the way into that corner over there. So I am eventually going to take it off of that corner and try to see if I can put it back on this rock. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. I wanted to show you what it looked like. And then once, once I get it back into place and assuming it stays, then I'll do another update on this video. But for now, this is what we got. This was always intended to be the home of this Ritteri anemone and these two clownfish. And maybe, maybe I'm gonna try to get the eggs that they keep laying. I'm gonna try to get them to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to try to get them to grow. I'm gonna try to try to keep them all alive. And hopefully, you know, I know that I'm gonna have to cover the overflow. I'm gonna have to turn off the power head. I'm gonna have to maybe get one of those uh, um, foam filters. I'm gonna see if I can get some rotifers in order to feed that to the baby clown shrimp and then different size pellets for when they grow bigger and bigger and seeing if I can get the get to start breeding these clownfish and seeing what color combinations I get from a storm and a black ocellaris. That actually would be pretty cool. I also have a bubble magus. I can't remember the exact name on this, uh, but I did put that in one of my previous videos. This is the skimmer that I'm using. It is sort of still wet skim mate, but it lasts about maybe three to four days before it fills up. So not too bad and so I'm I'm okay with it. I might be able to get it a bit darker but I just don't think I'll be able to get it to that that dark dark uh, you know kind of mud looking skim mate. I think it's too small of a skimmer but I am very very happy actually with it. Very happy for it to be doing if we're producing all this skim mate even though it's a bit wet uh it still lasts a few days and it's doing what it's supposed to do so definitely very happy one other update that i did to this tank is i got a caddy uh from innovative marine themselves that comes with those four little uh, foam pads a some phosphate remover and some carbon at the bottom and I exchanged that for the filter sock that it had because I just feel that it's going to be a lot easier to come in here, remove those, take them out, and put a new one in there versus trying to clean the filter sock all the time. Aside from that, no other updates other than this being in its final resting place, at least for now. All right, well, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, anything you'd like to know, any other videos you'd like to see, Definitely leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, I hope you would consider subscribing. I hope you consider hitting that like button. And I will catch y'all on the next one. <laughs>